Palettes for politics here again. So, from an economic aspect, we'd like to understand what all of this means. So, we brought someone to make it palatable for us. From the business day, we have Tando. So, we're seeing a clear change in our politics. Uh, it's always been ANC, ANC who have been generally Global South aligned. What does this mean now on a macro level? Well, we do expect that ANC will form into coalitions with another opposition party. For right now, we don't know whether it will be the left-leaning EFF or the right-leaning DA, uh, which markets are hoping um, will happen because it will guarantee policy, policy certainty, right? But whichever way the ANC goes, it will have to make concessions uh, regarding some of its fundamental policies, whether it is in national relations or its economic policy or its social policies. So what would an EFF, com EFF coalition look like versus a DA coalition? So the EFF coalition with the ANC would see the ANC moving more to the left wing. So we could see an expansion of social protections. The EFF has also said that it wants nationalization of the natural resources and national nationalization of the Reserve Bank. Compared to um, the DA, which said that it wants a repeal of the National Health Insurance Act, or bill right now, because it's been signed into law, and also the Biller Bill. And we could also see probably a reduction in uh, the rights of labor unions, and also probably a reduction in uh, the national minimum wage, should it go into coalition with the DA. And on a micro level, on a day-to-day, -day, um, you and I, what would each of those look like? We're yet to see. I mean, this is definitely a radical shift in the political landscape of South Africa. For the past 30 years, we've had one party dominance in ANC that has provided stability, not only for investors, but for ordinary people on the ground. Uh, moving forward, because of those concessions that the ANC has to make once it goes into coalitions, it, we will be in a new political arena that is probably going to affect every facet of our uh, political lives. But we have a commitment from most political parties right here at the, at the Rock Center and sources that I've been speaking to saying that they will put what is in the interest of the country first instead of the interest of the party. Whether how that will play out, we're yet to see. Have your sources said anything about that EFF vote in Orania? Not yet, <laughs> but I have to say that I think in 2014, the EFF got four votes in Urania. Right now, it's been reduced to one. So maybe their, their, their support in Urania has really decreased over the past 10 years. So. Okay, no, no. Still a bit more work for them to do then. You guys heard it. Okay, so now Western Cape, we know where they are. Um, the rest of the provinces... It could likely be an ANC coalition, but KZN, KZN is very different. MK, can you walk us through economically what that would look like? So KZN is such a critical part of the South African uh, e economy. There we have places like the Durban port, which is the largest port uh, in Africa. We also have um, the richest bay port or the richest bay terminal where our coal imports and exports go through. And then we have a large tourism industry in KwaZulu-Natal. So whichever government is formed there, um, really has to take into consideration that KZN, together with Gauteng, are really the economic heartbeats of uh, the country. So right now it looks like MK is taking it, and MK has a particular view of how the country's economy should run, which is slightly different from how um, the national government, the ANC, says the economy should run. So, yeah. Who do you think they'll go in coalition with? So the MK has said that they will go into coalition with progressive left-leaning black parties. When I spoke to uh, Duduzile Zuma, who is here on the floor, on the rock, she says that um, they're willing to work with the ANC, should needs be, 
on condition that the ANC recalls uh, its president, Cyril Ramaphosa. So we might have a South Africa without an ANC president or without Cyril Ramaphosa? That's the thing about our system is that uh, voters vote and then parties make the decisions. So the voters have made their decision. They've not given anyone an overwhelming majority. It's now up to parties to come together um, and see how they will divvy up the governance pie, um, whether or not um, Suru Ramaphosa is inaugurated in June or another president is inaugurated in June, we're yet to see. But if not Cyril, who could it be? That's the exact question on my mind. Because every single party has its own presidential candidate. It's just that Cyril Ramaphosa is right now the incumbent. And he is still president until a new president is elected. We're talking about political parties accepting or rejecting the result. What about the markets and the business? What are they saying about the results? So the markets were really jittery uh, once... ANC was projected at 42%, right? Um, and right now the RAND really did take a beating. But we must also remember that the RAND is not only affected by what happens internally, but also externally. Uh, yesterday the RAND was stable when the MPC announced that it's keeping rates stable. But when we look at what happened in um, the retail sector, the banks, um, and also the financials, those took a heavy knocking on uh, what the projected 42% of the ANC. So I think financial markets want stability. Um, uncertainty is, not, is unfavorable and we're yet to see when uh, the markets open after results are announced on Monday, how things would be moving. I have to ask, the RAND, is there any possibility that someone invisible hand could be playing with the RAND, making it, I don't know, manipulating it? Is there any possibility that that is what we're seeing now? RAND manipulation is such a serious accusation, eh? I wouldn't know. Um, right now, at my disposal, my information does not point to anything of RAND manipulation. But our currency, um, I think it's, one, it's called one of the most emotional currencies in the emerging markets because what happens overseas really, hap really affects our currency. Rand manipulation is something I'm not going to say right now. Thank you. Thank you for making time and making all of this palatable for us. Thank you and thank you to the viewers. Guys, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Let us know what you'd like to hear, who you'd like to hear it from, and what we should ask. Tune in.